Hello friends, welcome back to All in One Law. This is a medical video lecture on non-lactose fermenting bacteria. Non-lactose fermenting bacteria. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this non-lactose fermenting bacteria. So I'm going to talk briefly, and this is an important topic for USML Step One examination. Okay, guys. So we're gonna non-lactose fermenting. We divide into two types. One is either they are motile, motile, and H2S producing, and H2S producing. Okay. So in another category, we have non-motile, non-motile, and non-motile and non-H2S producers, right? So two categories, non-lactose fermenters are divided into motile with H2S producing, non-motile without H2S producing, right? So in motile and H2S producing non-lactose fermenting bacteria, two important bacteria you should remember for your SMLE, that's the proteus species, proteus species, and we have salmonella species, okay? In non H2S producing, we have two again that's Shigella and then we have Essenia pestis. Okay, right? Right, so to, we're going to talk about these four bacteria sh briefly. That's it. So, non lactose fermenting bacteria divided on the motility and the HGS production, whether they do or not. Right? If they do, there are two bacteria that is. Proteus and the Salmonella, the Proteus species and the Salmonella species. Then we have H2S in which non motile and non H2S producers, the Shigella species and Echina pestis. Right? Let's move on to the Proteus. Let me talk about the important points. Tell me for USMLE what things you should know about this. First, the Proteus, when it is given, remember the motility that is swarming motility. Swarming. Okay, swarming motility. Okay, they are ureus positive. Remember, ureus positive. Okay, they are indole positive. Indole positive. Okay, right. And they, uh, what do you call the, give a specific cal calculi that's known as a Staghorn calculi. Staghorn, right. So, so what are the other important things that you should know about this? Proteus vulgaris, very important species in this of Proteus, right? Yes. So, uh, how would you diagnose? Is by culture and sensitivity test, right? Remember the wheel flex test, okay? Right? Yep. Right. Now, let's move on to the what you call Salmonella species. The important thing about this is uh, we have vital test, right? So, we have what you call uh, they grow on the EMB or MacConkey's agar. Right, and uh, what is the predisposing factor for salmonella? We have high gastric pH and the gastrectomy. Remember, okay, and the viral test for O and H antigen, right? So, um, regarding we have uh, two important for this is one is a staph a salmonella typhi and a salmonella enterotitis. So, uh, salmonella typhi, no animal res reservoir, okay, so no H2S producer over here and invasive RE cells, rose spots, okay. So in uh, Salmonella enterotitis, we have poultry reptiles, remember, okay, and try to look for the symptoms of uh, what you call uh, enteritis in this. In a non motile non HUS producer, we have Shigella and Asinia pestis. As Shigella, you know very well, Shigella toxin is really very important, is a neurotoxin, is a cytotoxin, is an enterotoxin, okay. So it causes enterocolitis, so the patient will have bloody diarrhea whenever there's a bloody diarrhea. Remember about the Shiga, that's also a very important thing, okay. How would you treat that? The treatment is by giving the maintenance of hydration, electrolytes, and azithromycin can be used or fluoroquinolones can be used, okay. So Yersinia pestis, you know, very important thing about this is uh, safety pin appearance. That's really very important that you should know. Bubonic plague, very important. Okay, pneumonic plague, that's also very important. And flea bite, rodent, wild rodents spreads by, okay. And coagulus positive, okay. And it has two antigens, there's a V and W antigens, okay. So we have another is the Asinia pestis and Asinia 
enterocolitica right enterocolitica we made a different video on a senior uh enterocolitica for enterocolitica remember the one thing that is important is a cold growth uh yeah? cold growth okay as in enterocolitica is a cold growth cold cold growth okay and that's really very important how would you treat that treat is by streptomycin okay that's really very important okay that's it about these guys non lactose fermenters are divided into motile and aqueous producers and non motile and non aqueous producers in the motile and aqueous producers we have proteas and the salmonella species in the uh, non motile and non aqueous producers we have shigella species and asina species that is asina pestis and asina enterocolitica okay so remember in a salmonella typhi of the salmonella motile and aqueous they are not it doesn't produce aqueous remember this is really very important no aqueous producer Though it belongs to HTS, motile and HTS producing group, okay, it doesn't, but salmonella enteritis produces, okay, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.